Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Very special welcome here to Oak Chapel. Great to see all of you here in the sanctuary. A welcome to all of those who are worshiping with us online and any who may be in the parking lot as well. This is a special day in the church, which uh, you may not be aware of. This is the feast or the celebration of Christ the King. And this uh, celebration has changed a little bit over the years, so we'll fill you in on some of the details, but it's kind of a royal celebration that we're enjoying here today. A couple of announcements. This is the last Sunday to support um, our fellow congregant in regard to the conversion ban. So if you uh, have not yet had an opportunity to do so and you would like to contribute, you can make your check payable to Oak Chapel and just put Mobility Works at the bottom in the uh, memo section and we will support this person. We're still waiting to hear about the grant, but hopefully that will be coming soon. We've got a couple of uh, endeavors for Christmas and as you can see, we've already got a couple of gifts here, uh, the Samaritan's Purse, but also the um, Adopt a Family through the Salvation Army. So we've got a couple of more weeks for that. If you need more information, let us know, but we will certainly uh, keep you posted. But this is an opportunity to lift up someone in our community that uh, could certainly use it. Poinsettias, uh, that's obviously synonymous with uh, Christmas. Elizabeth has asked me to mention that if you would like to purchase one, you can do so in a couple of ways. You can contact her directly, or you can just write a little note on the attendance slip and just say you'd like to purchase one and uh, she'll get that taken care of with you. So got a few more weeks in that regard, but wanted to make you aware of that. We also have Christmas cookies for the homebound. Christy is heading that initiative. So if you'd like to be part of that, like to make a dozen cookies or whatever, you can do that and um, get it to Christy by December 1st. I think that's our deadline for that. Membership, if the, you are interested, I've heard from a couple people, but uh, we talked about this last week. If you are interested in membership in this church, you are most welcome. If you are not, that is perfectly fine. You are welcome to be with us whenever you are able to do so. And today is our fellowship dinner. I have a confession. I went down and uh, surveyed all the food. Uh, didn't, didn't sample it, but I surveyed it. It looks awfully good. So hopefully you can join us for our fellowship dinner afterward. And then after that, we'll have uh, an opportunity to decorate the church, which is always a really neat thing. And uh, we can use some extra hands there. So if you have a, a little extra time, we welcome you to do that here today. And um, our congratulations to the Scott basketball team. A couple of victories here in the last couple of days. The Al Van Wee Rotary Classic. Coach is with us. Coach uh, deserves all the credit, right? Is that the, did I say that right? Um, but anyway, what I would like to do at some point haven't talked to Doug about this yet, but I think we can work it out to kind of have an Oak Chapel night or afternoon at the game and uh, support the Scots. And of course, you can do that anytime on your own, but I thought it'd be nice for us to go as a group and support uh, JJ and his teammates. They look really good and uh, should be a very, very fun, another very successful season. So congratulations in that regard. I think I've covered everything here. Are there any other announcements that anyone, Miriam? Okay, one of the things that didn't get in the bulletin is the colors of Christmas. Um, starting next Sunday, we celebrate one of the different colors of Christmas each week. Uh, we'll have a slip of paper to let you know what all the colors are, but on the Sunday of that color, we encourage everyone to wear something in that color. And all you really need to know now is next Sunday is green. So if you guys can find something green to put on and wear it to church, that's great, and we'll have the rest of the colors for you then. Very good. Thanks, Miriam. Other announcements that anyone has today? I have one more, and um, we'll introduce Kim this way. Uh, we have an opportunity for liturgists. Many of you have responded favorably. We appreciate that. So we're covered up into uh, the first quarter of 2022. But if you would like to be with us here in worship and, and be a liturgist, you are welcome to do that. So um, if that's something that is of interest to you, please let me know. But now we will move on with our service, and Kim will lead us in our responsive reading. Would you please stand and join with me in the responsive reading? That is Psalms 47, verses 8 and 9. God is king over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. The leaders of all people are gathered. 
but the people of Abraham's God. Because the earth's guardians belong to God. God is exalted beyond all. Okay, would you remain standing and join with the first hymn, number 139, Praise to the Lord the Almighty. Praise to the Lord. Join with me in the prayer of affirmation and assurance. <clears throat> God of all creations, we give you thanks and praise for the gift of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who came into this world as a child, his life as an atonement of our sins, overcame death through his resurrection from the grave, and ascended to the glory and glory. Seated at your right hand as our Redeemer and King. May your name be forever exalted and glorified. Amen. And the unison prayer. Royal Lord of hosts, we reserve your holy and precious name, and we proclaim your glory as our Savior and King. You come to us as a servant, encouraged us to serve others. Now it is up to us to follow your lead by seizing the mantle of righteousness and spreading the good news in a way that is both gentle and kind, so that others may hear, see, and believe. Amen. And you may be seated. Holy and divine Redeemer, we are humbled by the magnitude of your sacrifice which took us from certain death to eternal life. Once again, we seek your grace and mercy as we come before you to repent of our sins and reconcile with you through our joint prayer of confession. Precious Savior, we bow down before you 
with heavy hearts, acknowledging our transgressions and seeking your forgiveness. Guide us from our current darkness and grant us wisdom, discipline, and strength to move toward the light by distancing ourselves from the danger of temptation and separating ourselves from the evil of sin. This we pray in humble contrition. Amen. Father, we hunger for your word and thirst for your wisdom as we prepare to be enlightened by today's scripture passages. May what we hear affect what we do so that we may become fortified in the faith, strong in the spirit, and inspired in the soul. This we pray with hopeful expectation. Amen. <coughs> Be reading from the Old Testament. Uh, Daniel chapter 7 verses 9 through 14 in the Common English Bible. As I watch, was watching, thorns were raised up. The Ancient One took his seat. His clothes were white like snow. His hair was like a lamb's wool. His throne was made of flame. <clears throat> its wheels were blazing fire. A river of fire flowed out from his presence. Thousands upon thousands served him. 10,000 times 10,000 stood ready to serve him. The court sat in session. The scrolls were opened. I kept watching. I watched from the moment the horn started bragging until the beast was killed and its body was destroyed, handed over to be burned with fire. Then the authority of the remaining beast was brought to an end but they were given ex an extension among the living for a set time and season. As I continued to watch this night vision of mine, I suddenly saw one like a human being coming with the heavenly clouds. He came to the ancient one and was presented before him. Rule, glory, and kingship were given to him. All peoples, nations, and languages will serve him. His rule is an everlasting one. It will never pass away. His kingship is indestructible. And now our New Testament passage from the Gospel of John, chapter 18, verses 33 through 37. When you first hear that, this, you might think, wait a minute, that's not quite the right season, but you'll find out why we're making this connection here a little bit later on. Pilate went back into the palace. He summoned Jesus and asked, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, do you say this on your own or have others spoken to you about this? Pilate responded, I am not a Jew, am I? Your nation and its chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus replied, my kingdom doesn't originate from this world. If it did, my guards would fight so that I wouldn't have been arrested by the Jewish leaders. My kingdom isn't from here. So are you a king, Pilate said. Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. I was born and came into the world for this reason, to testify the truth. Whoever accepts the truth listens to my voice. Let us rejoice in God's holy word. For his word brings us light, hope, and joy. And our next hymn this morning is number 168, At the Name of Jesus. Thank you. 
Amen. You may be seated. You may remember because it wasn't that many years ago when there was a lot of concern across our nation about what was referred to as the dumbing down of America. There was a lot of concern about students from other countries, particularly the continent of Asia, that were just doing considerably better in all phases of academia. Um, our students were falling behind and there was considerable concern on many, many fronts, especially because we were considered, the United States was considered to have the best educational system in the world. There were several ways that this was measured. It was measured through SAT scores and ACT scores and various other metrics that were used in this. But I actually think we could have used a much simpler, uh, much simpler way to gauge our precipitous decline in intelligence intelligence and that was to look at our television commercials if you look at our commercials these days they seem to appeal to well I don't know what but you have to really pay attention to figure out what the message is and how closely it is associated with the product so you can kind of feel the more television you watch you can kind of feel your IQ declining with each successive commercial to the point where you have to get out of the room and go to the kitchen, do something else. But uh, uh, nonetheless, this is, uh, it's, it's kind of humorous, but on the other hand, it's, it's kind of serious. So one such commercial, which is playing now, and of course uh, this, this organization has had commercials on television for years and years, but if you have uh, caught recently the Burger King commercial, and the absurdity of it all. It's the king who's dressed up in a plastic or, or fiberglass face. So he can't talk, but then they put some words on the screen that says, you know, he's pitching a product that he can't eat anyway. So it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, right? What is going on here? What are we doing? But I guess they proved their point because I remember the commercial and I remember the product. So I guess they've made their point. But anyway, it, it caused me to think a little bit that for years we've known this burger place as the king, Burger King, the king of all, reigning supreme, even though there are many other obviously hamburger outlets. Burger King positioned itself in the market as being the king, whether we agree with it or not, whether there are any metrics to go along with that, it doesn't matter. They proclaim that they are the king. But it made me sort of wonder and question, do we have a king? Is there a king right now in your life? Who is it who is ruling your life at this point? You know, fewer and fewer countries are governed in monarchies. So I was surprised to learn, obviously fell back on the Google trap and kind of looked around to see how many countries still have kings. And I was surprised to learn that Belgium, Bhutan, Cambodia, Cambodia, Jordan, Morocco, Norway, Sweden, Spain, Thailand, and many, many more still have monarchies in place. So there's still a king. In many cases, it's a symbolic king, but there's a king in that country, someone that people look up to, at least in a, in a figurative sense. And in fact, and you may not know this, even the United States has a king. Do you, do you know who that is? LeBron, exactly. Yes, King LBJ. But seriously, do we still, do we still have kings in our world? Do we still feel that we're ruled in, in that way? Do we, do we take them seriously? Mm, probably not. Maybe we pay homage to them or at least we respect them, but we are not really guided by any kings on this earth. But what about in our spiritual life? Is there a king in your life at this particular time? This is a day to mark, to remember, and to celebrate that there is a king in our life. Thus, we have some royalty or, or a, a symbol of royalty here today, the crown. And it causes us to think a little bit about the presence of a king in our life and how we respect that king and how we obey that king and how we humble ourselves before that king. So Kim 
just read for us the passage from Daniel that appears to be pretty cryptic in a lot of ways. So this is the Old Testament, and this is a prophet telling us about what is to come. So just as a quick review, here's what Kim read for us. As I was watching, thrones were raised up. The Ancient One took his seat. His clothes were white like snow. His hair was like lamb's wool. His throne was made of flame. Its wheels were blazing fire. The river of fire flowed out from his presence. Thousands upon thousands served him. 10,000 times 10,000 stood ready to serve. Now that's a pretty graphic image if you think about it, right? But even that probably doesn't come close to what we will ultimately see when we meet and greet our king. Certainly, though, worth noting because it goes on to describe in a somewhat cryptic account of how the beast will be destroyed, effectively putting an end to all evil forever. Now, you know, as we think about our world today, and we've had this discussion many times about the presence of evil and how things seem to be getting worse instead of better, and how a particular trial over the weekend the results of which have seemed to further divide us, um, and another one that is forthcoming this week that will, may divide us even more. The presence of evil is very problematic in our world, right? And it's almost incomprehensible and so difficult to, to overcome. So imagine for a moment that there's no more evil. Everything is good. Everything is the way that God had planned it to be. The king, the king who rules. I think that's a pretty exciting option, a pretty uh, exciting thing to think about as, as we look forward. And then the one true king makes his grand entrance. As Daniel continued to watch the night vision, he said this, Suddenly I saw one like a human coming with heavenly clouds. He came to the ancient one and was presented before him. Rule, glory, and kingship were given to him. All peoples, all nations, and languages will serve him. He is the everlasting one. It will never pass away. His kingship is indestructible. So think about that for a moment. Think about the one who will lead us and guide us and protect us and counsel us. What we have to look forward to. Finally, a leader that we can trust and obey and have complete confidence in. That is what awaits us. So there you go, there we have it, what we have to look forward to in the future. And most of us here have been trying to do that for a long time, maybe for our entire life, right? When we first came to Christ, we made him our king. We weren't always obedient. We certainly weren't always perfect, but we tried. We did our best to serve and to obey and to humble and to love, to love that pesky neighbor of us, of ours, that often became so difficult to love. We did our best. We weren't perfect, but we, we tried. So the point is that we don't have to wait for the king to come in glory. We can worship him today and show that through our words and through our actions. But just for some additional assurance, let's flip back or fast forward, depending on how you want to look at it, because things are a little bit out of order today, right? Old Testament first, that's right, that's fine. And then the New Testament, but the messages are a little bit out of order. What we read about in the New Testament has already taken place. What we read about in the Old Testament is yet to come. So let's take a look again at the Gospel of John. And we revisit this familiar passage, which is not associated with this time of year. It's not a Christmas story. It's rather a Lenten Easter type of story. But it bears repeating because it has so much of an effect and impact on the king that we serve. So as we read closely, we have a very frustrated Pontius Pilate. This thing was dumped on him dumped on his plate, and he doesn't want to have anything to do with it. He knows, that it, he knows how his people feel, but deep down inside, he kind of says, you know, this isn't right. I, I shouldn't be putting this person to death for a crime that he hasn't really committed. 
So he's very much conflicted at this point. He doesn't know what to do. He has no real case against Jesus, but the people over which he rules want Jesus' head. So obviously he feels the pressure. He has to make a decision. And like many people in power, you would like at least some support from your constituency when you make this. Even if you think what is right goes against what your people believe, you kinda, you're kind of torn. You know, how am I going to go with this? What am I supposed to do? So one last attempt. Pilate, Pilate is in this no-win situation. So he says to Jesus, okay, just you and me, right? Okay, are you the king of the Jews? Let's just get it out there. Is this what you're saying? Is this your proclamation? Are you the king of the Jews? So Jesus, knowing Pilate's dilemma, kind of toys with him a little bit, <clears throat> and he says, do you say this on your own, or have others spoken to you about me? Of course, Jesus already knows the answer to that. It's a, more of a rhetorical question, trying to put Pilate on trial, so to speak. So Pilate responds in, <clears throat> in the best way that he can, kind of a little bit of a cop-out. He says, I'm not a Jew, am I? How am I supposed to know this? Why was I put in this situation? Your nation and its chief priest handed you over to me. So you go ahead, you tell me, what have you done? What have you done? Let's get this taken care of. And Jesus counters with a baffling response. My kingdom does not originate from this world. If it did, my guards would fight so that I wouldn't have been arrested by the Jewish leaders. My kingdom is not from here. So if Pilate was confused to begin with, we can imagine what he's thinking right now. Who is this guy? And what planet is he from? Pilate <clears throat> was clearly overmatched. So he makes one final plea and he says, so you are a king? Jesus answers, you say that I'm a king. I was born and came into this world for this reason, to testify to the truth. Now this particular issue <clears throat> could be put into place in contemporary America and in our world today. What is the truth? And who speaks the truth? We have a lot of faithful, church-going, Bible-believing people who are divided on what the truth is. How are we to know? Are we confused like Pilate? What is the truth? How do we get at that? We think we know it, but do we? So two things on this regard. Number one, <clears throat> eventually the truth will be very clear to us. But in the meantime, the way we can get at the truth is to humble ourselves before the king, to read deeply and, and reach deeply into scripture and try to find out exactly what it is that Jesus is saying to us. Because this is what he said to Pilate, whoever accepts the truth listens to my voice. Where do we hear his voice? Well, we hear it in prayer, for sure, right? Even if you don't hear it audibly, you've heard, you've been guided, you've been directed, right? But we also hear it and see it and read it in the pages of this book that we read and, and try to guide and, and gain knowledge. And it's interesting because it's not always clear. So we could have a conversation and we might have a little bit of a different take, but I think I would argue that that's healthy for us to talk about it, to talk it out, to find out how we're coming at this and why we believe what we believe. But ultimately, whoever accepts the truth will listen to the voice of Jesus. So there you have it. The king, the true king, has spoken. But have we heard it? And more importantly, are we heeding it at this moment? Are we truly, are we truly bought in to the, to the word of God? Is it really guiding our lives at this moment? If not, can we make that move? Can we buy in? Can we totally accept and obey God's word? I think we can. There's still time. So let's take this occasion. And by the way, this... Um, I believe this particular Sunday, the Feast of Christ the King came in October. And about 50 years ago, it was moved right before Advent. And it seems to me to be the perfect place, even though it seems a little bit out of order. Even before the Christ child is born, we are celebrating the life of Christ. So it puts things in perspective. We see the end 
before we experience the beginning. And that's where we are with our faith. And that's why we're so blessed this morning because we, we don't have all the answers by any mean, but, but we do have the knowledge. We do have the guidance that comes to us through Scripture. Yeah, we follow it up occasionally. Maybe we do get a wrong take here and there. But if we faithfully listen and read the Word of God, we know where we're going on the pathway of righteousness. So before this Advent season begins, as we kind of reformulate, gather our thoughts, before we, we become consumed by the Christmas rush, let's take a moment, just a very short moment of silence to reflect acknowledge and proclaim what we already know that Christ is indeed the king of this world and of the world to come let us pray Lord God Almighty as we prepare for Advent and ultimately for the foundation of our faith let us give thanks and praise for your vital one as our Redeemer and our King we lift up in praise your holy name, and we pledge to spread the good news so that all may see and hear and proclaim your majesty from this day forward. Amen. So how do we communicate? We know we communicate through prayer, through scripture, and through our relationships and our fellowship and our love for one another. I've talked about the great things that this church has done and continues to do, and I believe will continue to do it at an even higher level in the days and weeks and months ahead. Each and every one of you has been called to a special mission. Given your talents, given your passion, given the gifts that you've been given, you have this power to make a difference, to restore others, and help them to transform. And it all begins with prayer. So we take this opportunity to, today to gather, to lift up our prayers, <clears throat> either audibly or in silence. We invite you to do that. A couple of uh, prayers have been lifted up already. Um, one in particular, um, Melissa Davis, who is uh, not a member of this church, but a friend of Miriam's and acquaintance of mine, who is uh, <clears throat> having some heart issues and uh, has to have surgery coming up very soon. So we want to lift up Melissa here today. Also want to give thanks for Jen's return. Um, we're blessed by what Jen has done in this church for decades. And Jen, we're blessed to have you back with us here today. I'm sure there are other praises and prayer concerns that people have. So we welcome you and invite you to raise anything that you have at this time. Any praises? Phyllis. So Andy had lung surgery, you say yesterday? Okay. Well, we all want to gather together and lift up Andy and pray for his comfort and pray for his healing in uh, this coming week. Any other praises or prayer concerns that anyone has today? Pam. Pam. Yeah, a lot of you will be either on the road or you'll be welcoming people who have traveled. We want to pray for the, their safety. Uh, it's, a, it's a crazy, crazy world. I, I, I don't know if I should share this story. I guess I can, but I just, just heard about this yesterday. Um, um, the volleyball coach was uh, preparing her team for the regional tournament. Uh, they had a very successful season. And she's talking to her husband on the phone at the very moment when her husband was struck by a semi and killed. And I, I, I'm sorry to share that, but I just thought it just speaks to <clears throat> the sanctity and the fragility of life. So we lift them up as well. Um, and um, can, cannot imagine a person in their 20s losing soulmate like that. Um, so there are just so many examples of that out there. And we, we definitely, you know, sometimes we're aware of them and sometimes we're not. So 
I want to lift up all people who are, who are struggling with that and, and especially with loss at this time. Any other praises or prayer concerns? All right. Well, let us uh, pause now for a moment of silent reflection. And as we do so, let us give thanks to God for this day and for every day. And as we prepare for this week of thanksgiving, that we take special note of our blessings, and that we also take an opportunity to reach out to others in need. We are thankful for the Lord, for the King that we serve, and we're thankful for one another. We don't always agree. Sometimes there are differences of opinion, but we are one together in Christ. And so we come before him now and lift up his name in a moment of silent reflection. Dear Lord God, we lift up our brothers and sisters in prayer this morning, asking that you heal their wounds and ease their pain. Likewise, we come before you asking for healing and restoration of all that ails, that people might be comforted and might find refuge in you. As we come together today, we lift up Melissa as she prepares for surgery. We ask you to be with her and watch over her and bring her complete healing. We give thanks for the return of Jen. We ask you to continue to, to be with her as we give thanks for the many things that she does for our church. We lift up Andy and in his young life, recovering from lung surgery, we ask you to be with him and to bring him healing, peace, comfort, freedom from pain, and to bring comfort as well to his parents and grandparents and all of his loved ones. We pray now, especially at this time of year, for travel mercies as people visit friends and relatives. We ask you to be with all who travel. We also lift up those who have lost loved ones on the roadways through various tragedies. Lord God, we mourn their loss, but we give thanks for their life. We continue to lift them up and lift up their families as they grieve in the weeks and months ahead. Dear Lord, we're thankful, so thankful for this time together. We ask you to be with us and watch over us as we lift up your holy name in saying together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so as we reflect on our many blessings, let us now return thanks. If you have not already done so, the plate is in the narthex. If you might remember our fellow congregant who is in need of a conversion van, if you wish to donate to that, you may do that as well as the Ties and offerings have been placed in the plate in the narthex. Let us now joyfully together celebrate our gifts as we present them before the Lord. Almighty God, may today's offerings be holy and pleasing in your sight, and may they bless others while advancing the glory of your name and your kingdom here on earth. This we pray with great joy. Amen. And our closing hymn this morning is number 715, Rejoice, the Lord is King.
Before we depart, I want to remind everybody that everyone is welcome. You don't have to have brought anything today. Uh, I made a, uh, a Mexican plate. I'd really like as many people as possible to sample it uh, and see if you still walk out healthily afterwards. So uh, you're welcome. A lot of good food downstairs, so please uh, join us afterward. But before we go, let us pray. Great and glorious God, <clears throat> as we prepare to leave the serenity of this sanctuary and head into a wayward world, we would ask that you bless us, enlighten us, inspire us, and protect us so that we may boldly share the good news and help others see that you are the king of all creation. This we pray with great joy and confidence. Amen. Amen.